In this demonstration of the XGAR program, we will compute the two-attic cohomology of the second-order oliver maclean space for the group Z mod 2. Uh, this takes as input the cohomology that we computed last time, the mod 2 cohomology of the same space, and feeds it into a spectral sequence called the Bockstein spectral sequence. Once again, we will work only in a 10 by 10 grid and inform the computer of this. Then, the cohomology that we managed to compute last time was polynomial in the following degrees. There's a generator in degree negative 2, 3, 5, and 9. These classes were named, they were named iota 2, square 1 iota 2, square 2 square 1 iota 2, and square 4 square 2 square 1 iota 2. I'll rearrange the view so we can see what we're doing. Here's our grid. Uh, these are the appropriate bounds so that we have full information in the highlighted square. The box line spectral sequence proceeds while introducing a new generator, degree 0, 1, which controls multiplication by 2. Differentials in the box line spectral sequence correspond to the or the first differential in the box line spectral sequence corresponds to the action of the square one operator in the in usual ordinary mod two cohomology. The action of this operator is known. Here, this class iota two has a, has an adjacent class referred to as square one iota two, and hence there is a differential. In degree 3, the class is referred to as square 1 iota 2. Square 1 square 1 is 0, and hence there is a 0 differential, which we explicitly tell the computer about by telling it that we have a partial definition of this differential, which is defined on the entire space, and whose action is by the 0 matrix. Notice that it does not draw a line. Similarly, we can inform it about the action of the differential in degree 5. One of these two refers to, ah, oh, here it is, square two, one. Square one, square two is also known as square three, and hence this is equal to, or square one of square two, square one, iota two, is equal to square three, square one, iota two, or square one, iota two, quantity squared. That is this row. And so we tell it about this differential. Finally, in degree 9, there is a similar identity. We seek out square 4, square 2, square 1, and inform the computer that it hits a perfect square. Finally, we use the Leibniz rule to propagate. This is okay because the Carton formula applied to square one looks identical to a derivation. There's our network of differentials. When we turn the page, this is what we see remaining. Separately, I computed the spectral sequence by hand, and we can check that we get the that we get the expected behavior. So first. Here is a listing of the inferred action of square one using the Carton formula. So there are quite a lot of arrows in here and quite a lot of information of which we had to manually specify fairly little. Then, given this information, it computed the, I computed the spectral sequence to take the following form. When I turn the page, sure enough, it matches the expected computation. Good. Now, what about higher order differentials in the box line spectral sequence? A theorem of May describes them in the case that we care about. 
So the, the possible differentials appear in this degree and in this one, where the cycles are i out at 2 squared and i out at 2 to the 4th. So they're perfect squares. Faye proves the following theorem. You can look down here at parts 1 and 3. Uh, in the case of applying these high order of Fox line differentials to perfect squares and perfect powers, he gives the following formula. Using that formula, we enter the appropriate information as computed. I've lost it. <clears throat> as computed on the whiteboard. Okay. So there's a differential of order two. Once again, it is one by one. It acts on there it is, the class iota 2 squared. The action of this is as a sum. It sends it to the sum iota 2 square 1 iota 2 and square 2 square 1 iota 2. These are the two basis vectors on the right. We apply the Leibniz rule to carry this differential up the rows. Then, there is a further differential here applied to the square of i to 2 squared. Here's the square of i to 2 squared, and it acts by i to 2 cubed times square 1 i to 2, which is this one plus iota 2 squared times square 2 square 1 iota 2. Which is this one. Once again, we use Leibniz propagation and turn the page. Here's the expected answer from manual computation, which you can see agrees with what we found. There's a tower of dots in degree 0, a single dot in degree 3, 1, 2, 3, nothing in 4, and 5 there's a pair of dots, 6, 7, and 8 all hold a single dot, 9 has two dots, and then two, do or two dots in the bottom row, and then two dots above it. X chart allows us to flip back and forth and see the action of the differentials as we proceed. Corresponding to the picture in the lower right over here. Since this is the last possible differential, we can read off the cohomology, the two attic cohomology of this space from this picture. This first column corresponds to a copy of the two attics, and we have a Z mod 2, a Z mod 4, Z2, 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 and then a Z2 together with a Z8 in this column. 